I packed my storyteller's suitcase with a whiskey bottle, a notebook, and my songs. I'm at bar stool damsels, tomcats working a midnight scandal. Take me home, brother trouble, I'll be coming along If you're gonna ride on this gypsy boxcar town to town Singing rhymes Just when you think you're gonna lose yourself you see your name up on a neon sign He packed a suitcase, oh Storytellers making rounds. Oh, he's never gonna settle down. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this live broadcast from True Fire. Today, you're watching and listening to Ellis Paul, one of my buds and um, one of his biggest fans. Ellis is an extraordinary uh, singer-songwriter. He's been on tour, playing festivals, clubs, recording since 1990. Uh, I, 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 last count, it was something like 5,000 5, shows, <laughs> which is crazy. But that's, that's where you pay your dues as any musician, but certainly as a singer-songwriter. Um, Ellis is also a passionate uh, educator, and we've been having a blast working together. He is really leading the charge on the new singer-songwriter category here at True Fire. Um, this is the second live we've done, right, Ellis? Mm -hmm. We did one when you came in, and uh, did Birth of a Song was the very first course. Yes, yeah. Um, and then the song grows up. Um, and, you know, to be honest, we weren't quite sure how many, you know, songwriters we had out in True Fire World, but apparently we've got a lot because the feedback was incredible and you've got a lot of people working on your song crafting systems and approaches. Mm -hmm. um, both of those courses have uh, the editing wheel in The Song Grows Up. And what did, what did you call the poster and the system in Birth of a Song? What was that? Um, the Song Idea Generator. Right. Right, yeah. So in the first course, Ellis shows you um, an incredibly impactful, creative, right brain system for, you know, the genesis of an idea and how you take an idea and who the narrator is and and take a song kind of to the point where it's time to now refine it and edit it um, and get it ready for recording. And that's where the song grows up. The second course comes in and we use the editing wheel there. And man, people just love that. How long have you been working those systems? Well, I've been teaching, you know, doing workshops and retreats and working at festivals that have songwriter groups for, for the last couple of decades. So, you know, and, and my, my main belief in all of this is that it's easy to generate a song idea and put it on the paper. Um, it doesn't mean it's going to be a great song or, or a refined song. It's the editing process that makes a good idea really into a piece of art. Um, and th that editing, that second class, I think, is, is the one where, you know, you put yourself to the test. And it's, it's, there are a lot of lazy songwriters out there that just think, if I've come up with this idea, I can sit down like the Beatles and mm -hmm. write a swimming pool in five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but the, normally you can't do that. If you're John Lennon and Paul McCartney working side by side mm -hmm. uh, in your 21 and 22, you're mm -hmm. doing, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if you want to refine a song, refine an idea, make it into a piece of art, craft it, um, it's, it happens in the editing process, just like writing books does, just like making movies does. Mm -hmm. And that's why they give Oscars to movie editors and, and people that do exactly. that kind of work, you know? And it's the same thing with songs. Yeah, the, um, 
those, you have these, um, you know, the editing wheel, for example, is a poster. You have a poster on mm -hmm. performance. Um, you, you can check it out on True Fire. We have a lot of free videos that show off um, some of the learning systems and the tools, learning tools. Um, but those posters, you there are thousands of them hanging on the walls of not just students of songwriting, but many of your peers, many, you know, uh, Grammy-winning songwriters have those posters on their wall, and I've yeah. seen them, you know. The, the other thing I'd like to say is um, that I attended the, you know, your retreat, um, which is like standing room only. You can't even get into these things. And Ellis invited me, squeezed me in, put me in a bungalow off campus someplace. <laughs> so I had to walk through the woods and the ticks. And <laughs> but I got in. And uh, you had, man, you know, some of the student singer-songwriters absolutely blew me away. And, of course, you have a lot of teachers, established teachers. Vance mm -hmm. happens to be one of them. Uh, Oh, who else did you have there? Um, the uh, Dobro player. What is her name? Oh, oh Abby Gardner. Abby yeah. Gardner. Lori was there. Mm -hmm. um, Red Molly was there, the group Red Molly. But even the beginner singer-songwriters were, you know, lo loved the camp. And, you know, um, I thought they were writing great songs right off the start, you know. Maybe, yeah. You know, so anyone can write a song, you know, but it might take a while to write a really great song, yeah. right? Well, you know, I think what happens is a lot of people write alone at home and there's a closet version of their artistic self that doesn't interact with a lot of people who are artists, doesn't even interact with people who are audience members. Mm -hmm. So they never, they never put the, the song to the test. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that doesn't mean the song is even bad. It might ha it might have a great genesis and a great idea, and mm -hmm. and might even function on its own. But it's that refinement process of getting feedback from other people, sharing it across the table with another songwriter, getting a mentor to come and take a look at it, getting it in front of audiences. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that refine it. And remember, you know. Paul McCartney and John Lennon, they had each other, and then he had George Martin floating around, then he had a record right. label floating around. <laughs> it's, it's not like these people function without filters and without you right. know, editors and, and Collaboration. Like, yeah. yeah. And that's really, that's what really makes a song great. I think it's the polishing and the crafting and the thinking like, what, what do I really, what does this, why does this song, why is it worth someone's four minutes of their mm -hmm. life, you yeah. know, to give up, to yeah. listen to this? Yeah. And, um, and you have to make it worth that battle because mm -hmm. that's the trick with, you know, from my perspective, someone who has to live off their songs, mm -hmm. someone has to feed their children and send them to college based on their songs. These songs have to go out in the world and make impact. Mm -hmm. And, um, not only on audiences, but they have to have enough impact so that financially I survive and my ego survives right. and it feeds my sure. tour and <laughs> my business and all those sure. other things, you know? Um, in just a moment, we're going to talk about what Ellis filmed this week. We have two brand new courses that are more guitar centric. Um, you don't even really have to be a singer or a songwriter uh, to take advantage of these. And, you know, Ellis, um, you know, we love Ellis's guitar work. He does, um, you know, just some incredible fingerings and voicings and grooves and patterns. And I know that our audience l loves that kind of stuff. So we did two courses, but before we do that, cause we've done too much talking head stuff and sure. you and I can talk forever play afterlife. Okay. Sure. <laughs> this is open D tuning. It is an open D tuning. Yeah. And, and you, um, you do break this down in one of the courses, right? I do, yeah. And the great thing about open D is, is you know, here I am, I'm playing a D chord without my hands on, on the guitar at all. So you get a lot of those ringing, droning strings in the background as you're moving up and down the neck. So there's this, it's almost like this backdrop of these uh, really rich sounding strings ringing in the back as you're... you're you're doing all these melodic little hooks and stuff, and there's this drone of the D in the background, and it, it, it makes for a really fat-sounding orchestral version of a guitar. 
Play it. favorite tunes and uh it's on your latest album yeah i've got a new album uh it's available at my website it's not out until the end of may may 31st is the street date but that's uh one of the many songs on it was autobiographical songs for the most part cool it's about days of my life and that one was me explaining the afterlife to my five-year-old daughter after my my father had passed Mm. it's a great song we 
it was a that was a self indulgent <laughs> request because <laughs> I we did it on the first one, but we wanted to do it again on this one. <laughs> I have um, a feeling that's going to be one that a lot of people gravitate so. to because the it's response so to that is crazy. Um, let's talk about Open D, yeah, which is really the theme of this broadcast and the course you just shot. Mm -hmm. called Acoustic Coffee House Open D, and it, it kind of an extension to the uh, Song Factory uh, brand of yeah. courses that you're doing here. So I guess, you know, the first thing is most people, when you present them with the notion of learn how to play open tunings, you know, our, our, our first reaction is, I'm having enough trouble in standard tuning. Yeah. And so why is open tuning cool to learn just as a guitar player well if you think of a guitar as a, a piece of wood that's creating a waveform you strike it and you've seen these photographs of strings moving so you know that the the, the strings are vibrating and there's six of them here but when you go into an open tuning you broaden the waveforms and the intensity of those waveforms vibrates in a much broader level. So you're just creating a bigger wall of sound coming off the sound hole. And that's, that's the first thing is that it feels more orchestral. In open D, the, the, the tuning is D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. So you have three Ds and two As and a stray F sharp. It kind of looks like my high school report card. But the three Ds are ringing together simultaneously, and so you have that. Imagine those octaves just ringing, 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 and then the A octaves are ringing. And it just creates this amazing band of strings, and then, you know, you have those octaves, so you have, uh, you know, access to these octave melodic things. <laughs> Stuff like that is in your hands. And then there's these um, harmony strings between the Ds and the As and the F sharp that exist so that uh, in the just in the availability of the space around your fingertips are all sorts of <laughs> melodic harmonic things that you can do that really are great for fills, great for passing tones, just to break up you know the flow of chords and um and, and not possible in a standard tuning not as easy and, certainly not yeah as and easy. i'm a self-taught guitar player so never had a, a guitar lesson in my life and i saw open tunings really early as a chance to to fake being a better guitar player than i was because i could create more dynamic cool things out of an open tuning than i could out of standard and i still mm -hmm. kind of feel that way i feel like standard is sort of the the, the clean way to play a guitar. It's um, the overtones don't fight each other. Mm -hmm. It's um, a lot of times it's, it's a little bit easier maybe to record in standard because you're not fighting with a bass player and a mm -hmm. kick drum and some of the piano and mm -hmm. the organ parts because with the bigger waveforms, they eat up a lot of that space mm -hmm. in recording. But when I'm alone on stage, I want to present this band in a box vibe. And so I've got this D string tone down way low and I even have taken it a step farther to C sharp in, in this case but the configuration is still open D but so I, I get a lot of string noise which I love so in a song like Maria's Beautiful Mess I get a nice click off that really loose mm -hmm. E string on the bottom that's tuned down to a C sharp in this case, but it would be D and open D. And I can really make the drummer talk on, uh, on a, a song like that. And then I have this, you know, this very low bass string. So I get more percussive noise out of it, and then I get a bass player. Imagine the money I'm saving right now. It's, <laughs> It's it's a it's the start of a band, and then when you throw in the guitar player, you've got almost the whole Rolling Stones right there. All you need is the vocalist, uh -huh. and that comes later, right. if you want. Uh -huh. I just love it. It's it's my favorite tuning, and I'm I'm thrilled that I get to share it with you guys on True Fire. Because so it's let's fun. tell folks about. 
um, you know, the curriculum for this yeah. acoustic coffee house edition in Open D. Mm -hmm. um, what we really loved about uh, Ellis's approach to teaching Open D and to making music with Open D, there's really no theory. You need to. You don't even need to really know the names of the chords. I mean, all of the chord voice voicings. You know, you could you could name them if you wanted to. But it's kind of unnecessary in this case. So Ellis broke down um, uh, the voicings that he uses a lot into eight chord scales. Mm -hmm. And there are eight voicings in each of the eight chord scales, all leveraging open detuning. And you take those voicings and you add embellishments and you know, little moves and, you know, whether they're fills or rhythm patterns, add a little groove, a little percussion, you have a pretty wide palette. So would you show them a couple of the chord scales? Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of make sense out of it. It sounds a lot more than what it really is. It, there's a scale here, of course, it's tuned to a D. So it's... And there's eight variations of that that you can put chords to. So let's look at one, here's. And the way I see this, because I'm a self-taught guitarist, is not as chords, but as shape forms. So I'm calling this first two positions, these first two positions as slants, because the chords appear as angles, right? And then on the third and fourth position, in the fifth fret and seventh fret there, I see them as stacks. It's two stacks, the fingers are on top of each other in that single fret. And then it goes back to the slant, slant, stack. So all I see with my eyes and ears, and I'm not going to go into the numbers or, or the chord names or any of that, is slant, slant, stack, stack, slant, slant, stack. That's all I hear, that's all I see. And so it's open, slant, slant, stack, stack, slant, slant, stack, up and down. Stack, slant, slant, stack, stack, slant, slant. That's all I see is just that slant, slant, stack, stack, slant, slant, stack. And I know that's a scale, and that's covering the whole neck. So these variations are just subtle. Here's another one. I'm just playing those two notes on the neck. Slant, slant, stack, stack, slant, slant, stack. So five, seven, and 12 are stacks, and the rest are slants. And that's how I see it, just a slant, slant, stack, stack, and I can walk up and down the neck and compose and create these fills. And then this one on the lower side, the slant appears almost as an L, as you can see. Slant, slant, stack, stack, slant, slant, stack. Again, it's just variations of the same thing. Slant, slant, stack, stack, slant, slant, stack. And that gives me the whole thing. I think, you know, I could teach this to somebody who didn't have vision because based on these forms, uh, it's just slants and stacks and slants and stacks. And you're sliding your hand without moving your finger positions that much. So you get a lot of, you can do a lot of those. And it's just everything is right there, and it's easy to, to visualize it. You're, rather than thinking of, like, what chord is this? Where are my fingers going? All you're doing is just imagining these shapes moving up the neck, and it makes and simplifies the whole process together. And then, again, you know, you always, you, you can pick and choose what strings to play against these things. Like, here's that scale. With just the notes, but in the body of a full strum, it sounds like this. And suddenly you have a, a full orchestra. The Boston Pops are playing alongside your notes, and it's you've got this fat orchestra. And, and you know, when you're playing in a song, in the context of a song, you want focus on these little riffs, but then you want to move into bigger moments that flash against those little moments. So you're constructing these parts that are expanding and contracting and ebbing and flowing and creating tension or release. And you don't have that same kind of access in standard tuning. So for me, as a solo performer out on the road trying to impress an audience with dynamic changes and stuff, open D gives me a lot more range. And, um, 
And it's not difficult. It's not difficult. The hardest thing to do is just tune the guitar. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. And every single chord you play in standard is right here on the neck. There are uh, minor chords. And then if you want to play with one finger and show off to your kids, you just bar all the way up on open D. So that's a G and an A, you know. This, this land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island. So you have those major chords right there with a single finger. And if you want to impress your kids at home, and you're not much of a guitar player, you can just say, look, honey, I can do this with one finger if I can do it. A seven-year-old can do it. You should play guitar too. So there's just um, there's a lot to be drawn from, and I like the availability of that dynamic range without having to be Tommy Emmanuel to hit those those notes. And yeah. you know, all the drama is there with uh, with less of the training right. necessary. Um, there's a quick, well, sort of a question, but yeah, um, uh, Richard is asking: Is your lower string still tuned down to C sharp or D? Just yeah. explain one more time that you're really an open D tuning. You're really an open C sharp tuning. It's mm -hmm. the same as D. You're just tuned down. So Yeah, I tune the guitar into open D, but I wanted to get more bass resonance and more f floppiness out of the strings. So I tune it to open D, and then it's down even further, another half step to open C sharp. And uh, just for my purposes here, because I'm going to be singing things, and, and my voice will accommodate C sharp as well, a little better than D. So we've taken the open tuning, and we brought it down another half step from. You could even bring it down a whole step. I know there's. And like, I might do that. The yeah. older I get, the <laughs> yeah, exactly. more my voice doesn't want to hit those <laughs> exactly. notes. So. Okay, so in the first section of the course, again, you know, Ellis strived to make this a very guitar player centric course, mm -hmm. um, while songwriters can certainly l leverage these voicings and patterns and write songs with it. It's just a great course for anybody that likes to sit with their guitar and play cool stuff. So after you learn and show them, do you have the charts of the voicings we kind of penciled out? Yeah, it's right here just, on the floor. Just show the camera that. So there's, again, eight of these chord scales, each with eight voicings. Of course, the patterns repeat from the 12th fret on, and you'll, and one of them turn around. That's the other thing. We just proved there are eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, those will all be neatly notated for you. There'll be on screen uh, notation as well so that you can follow along. So the deal is in the first section, Ellis presents all of those chord scales and all of those voicings. He then shows you some ways to creatively embellish those shapes. Can you show a few of the embellishments you do on some of the shapes? Sure, you know, um, like, these are stacks and um, uh, we'll do this. Now, all I'm doing here is I'm holding the stack in place. All I'm doing is just moving my hand. I'm not changing my finger pattern. And then I'm just doing a little bit of a hammer on to create some drive behind it. And I feel like I'm doing a lot more sonically than I Sounds am visually. Great. And my hand is just, again, it's it's holding steady with pretty much the same pattern. I, I vary it a little bit when I get down here. I just pick it up off the, the lower uh, two strings into the next set, but. Just with the little hammer-ons within the formation of your fingers not moving anywhere off the fret at all, mm -hmm. you have a lot of action that you can do to create drama and drive and rhythm and groove, which is, which is and great. And you were um, demonstrating it. He named it very technical. Forgive him for that. But I, I think the technical term is free the pinky. <laughs> free the pinky, <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. If you can just reach your pinky up on melodic things. Mm -hmm. 
There's a lot of stuff within grabbing reach of your pinky. Um, So if you can reach up and just grab a note or two, just as fills and little mm -hmm. embellishments, it's, mm -hmm. it's really, really nice. And then you were talking about also how, because it's an open D tuning, it's pretty hard, you know, you don't have to worry about hitting an open string um, by accident or, or hammering onto a note from the open string. Right. It's kind of a safe haven for guitar players, <laughs> it, isn't it? It can be, yeah, because it's because um, pretty much everything sounds great against the drone, um, and in and, and it hides well when mistakes are made. So, just um, you know, you, not the songwriter, but say you're a guitar player. You come home after work. You pick up your guitar. You tune it open D. And you fiddle around and come up with a nice little groove. Can you just demonstrate something that you could do with any or any combination of those chord scales you show us? Oh, sure. So I'll take that lower chord scale and I'll take an upper chord scale. And then here's the lower one. We'll even do a middle one, it's just these two strings. So you got have access to all these things that are playing off the relationships of the chords and you can make it as again as small or as big as you want mm -hmm. if I was going to be finger picking it'd be It's just great access. And you have the high strings with melodic stuff with harmonies easily there, and then you have a more thicker chord on the low end. And then if you want those droning, uh, you know, higher strings to ring out, it's... Or you can just take them out. you can avoid the, the, the open D-ness of it. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I have with dad gad, that it's hard to avoid the dad gadness of right. that tuning right. for some reason. And yeah. it's only a half a step off right. of this one. But here you can sort of work around, you can take advantage of the open D-ness and you can also disguise it uh, really easily. And that allows again for that accordion thing of making it really fat and really tight, really fat, really tight. So just like creatively, you were talking earlier about, you know, in standard tuning, we all kind of get, you know, locked into a rut. We have muscle memory, you know, our fingers kind of want to go to the familiar places, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, open tuning, you're not familiar with it. And, you know, you take any of those chord voicings, um, and explore them and you come up with some really interesting sounds you yeah. know which sparks creativity do you ever do that when you're writing a song just play around with it until you find something that sounds good and does that inspire a song yeah that's how i do it um and because this is nowhere's man land you know you're, you're basically mm -hmm. reminds me of planet of the apes and you're you've passed that border where right. you know those 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 giant sculptures are hanging out on the right. desert and you're entering this like <laughs> how do i find my way right um that's what an open tuning is it's like holding a mandolin for the first time it's uh -huh. a completely different 
instrument in many ways, but it's familiar. And that's why, you know, a simple map of those shapes gets you off and running, and then you're, you're pretty deep in the tuning within five minutes. Which, you know, we think certainly is, you know, the magic of this course. If you go, um, and I've done this, you know, I, I love open tunings, you know, just recently got turned on to them myself. You're, you're certainly partly responsible for that, okay? Um, and you go Google up open tuning chords and you'll find, uh, you know, a ton of chords, you know, named chords, but you have to be very careful. You know, you can pretty much play any chord you want. I mean, you can mm -hmm. pretty much voice any chord, but certain strings need to be muted. You know, they're X'd, you right. know, so you have to be, you know, very careful and you lose the open ringing kind of sonic coolness of the open tuning, right, um, when you do that. So in the way you present it, you give us an entire vocabulary, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. You can find the one chord, the four chord, the five chord. You can find the minor chords. You can find the major chords. Um, but you really give us a wide palette of, you know, let's call it 64 colors, you know, it is 64. Right. We should have done the crayon thing with it. <laughs> right. 64 colors, and then you add the embellishments. There's, you know, you can you can make a lot of music. Yeah, um, and a lot so of interesting music. Give them an example of that. So, you know, Ellis is a singer-songwriter. Mm. So um, he's included the performance studies for this course feature three of the songs that he's written in open D. Mm -hmm. So... Play one of them for us, would you? Well, this one, um, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do this one. It's not one of the three that I'm, I'm, I have in the course, but it's an open D. And I use um, one of the scales. I use uh, the, the scale that's this. To basically write the introduction. This song's called Drive and Movie. And I'm just working off, uh, you know, for the most part, with chords off that scale. Take me to a driving movie Put your body right next to me Whisper promises to me Roll the windows down Cause when you look at me like that Kiss me and I'll kiss you right back Break your heart, give it to me Take me to a drive Take me on a long vacation Outbound from an old train station We'll watch the world go by Till we close our eyes in a sleeping car We'll wake up in a brand new place You're the only one who knows my face Looking for a little salvation Take me on a long vacation Take me, take me Doesn't matter where we go Take me, take me Take me on a roller coaster I wanna feel my heart turn over Till I'm upside down Can't touch the ground There's no gravity 
feel my blood rush Just like the first time we touch Wanna fall over and over and over Take me on a roller coaster Take me, take me Doesn't matter where we go Take me, take me I don't even have to know Take me, take me Take me slow Take me to a drive and movie Slide a little closer to me Beautiful man Every time I hear it it's <laughs> Thank you Beautiful um, I love the arrangement And I, 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 I know I couldn't get that range out of the guitar mm -hmm. on, in standard, you know, and, um, and now, it was written in standard, by the way. Yeah. I, I was just going to ask you, well, a, a couple of things. One, I want to point out that all those chord voicings come from the chord scales in, in the chorus mm -hmm. with embellishments. Number right. one, first question, capo, why the capo? Um, because I'm not good enough to play without it, <laughs> mainly. An easy way to find um, all of the keys that work with my voice. So to adjust the open strings to the key you're singing in. Essentially, right? and then not mess up any of the, uh, the chord forms and shapes. Mm -hmm. So now I get to do the same shapes, mm -hmm. basing this as being the start of the guitar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my, my open... My open strum now is uh, whatever it is. I think it's an F sharp or something. Yeah, but still, um, even though it's the same tuning mm -hmm. with the capo, the same chord scales and chord All forms works. work, mm -hmm. the same embellishments work, yet it almost feels like a completely different sonic landscape, right? Right, yeah. So, and um, it works as far, I mean, we can go way the hell up here and, you know... And I often do. Yeah. All that little magic stuff that worked in without a capo still works way the hell up here. Yeah. And I don't have to change anything. It's funny you said, and, and you've mentioned this before, that you do tend to write a lot of your songs in standard tuning mm -hmm. when, you know, in the early stages of the song. Especially if I'm playing and writing with someone else because they're, they might even be the guitar might be in their hands and I might be the one that's throwing the lyric out. So, right. and then, you know, like, you know, Christian Bush, um, with a uh, drive-in movie, he and I wrote that together. Mm -hmm. He was in standard, just playing a three chord standard kind of CFG, you know, take me to a drive-in movie, put your body right next to me, whisper right. promises to me, right. roll the windows down. You know, he's a country right. star and, right. and, uh, and then I said, well, how do I make that into an Alice Paul song? And, mm -hmm. and so uh, eventually I arranged Boom, it right? for Open D. And then, yeah. in, in, in fact, you know, the, the recording is two guitars. And I can't obviously pull off two guitars at once, mm -hmm. but I can once I slip it into Open D. Mm -hmm. um, it makes for the, an arrangement that can happen where all the elements that happen in the recording can happen just with me by myself, mm -hmm. but only because those strings are right there and it's easy mm -hmm. to hit those harmony lines and it feels like there's more than one guitar player going on here um, because you get the drone strings, so it feels like someone's courting right. and then someone's doing right. all that. Yeah, it's really, you know, we were talking about, you know, it, it's interesting when you, you know, you hear a song on the radio and, and you know, as guitarists, we're certainly very tuned in to the guitar work on, you know, on any piece of music, right? Mm. And, you know, if you're not familiar with open tunings, you're, you're wondering, how did he get those voicings? Or is there a second guitar there? You know, how, right. how are those sounds being generated? And then you find, you know, it's like uh, Keith Richards uh, with all the open G work that he did. Yeah. And how many people tried to learn those tunes in, in standard, standard tuning. <laughs> right. And, and they, they pull it off. 
but mm-hmm. not authentically, you know? Right, yeah, not the nuances aren't there. Aren't just quite aren't there, yeah. you know? So um, chord scales, chord forms, embellishments, creative applications, three performance studies, um, all three of the songs, um, you know, if you want to learn the Ellis Paul songs, the way he, you know, everything is tabbed out for you. Um, but the gold there is stealing. <laughs> Right. There's a ton of moves right. there that should and will inspire whether you write your own song or you just want to pull out the verse or the intro or the chorus section and, and jam with your buds on it. I mean, it's just the course is enjoyable. It's very accessible. And um, if you haven't tried open tunings yet, uh, this is a great place to start because you'll be making music from the get go. Right. From yeah. the get go. And, you know. Um, Led Zeppelin, Robert Johnson, Mississippi, John Hurt, all these incredible, uh, Jimmy Page, you know, all these incredible guitar players came out of that tradition of blues guys playing in open tunings in, in, you know, the thirties and forties. And a Mm -hmm. lot of the, that's where Keith Richards got turned on to open G Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, that's generally how blues people played because, again, they weren't trained either, so they right. just tuned it to a chord until it sounded right. right. And then they found their way around the neck. Um, you and know. they liked the sound of that for all the reasons you stated earlier. Mm-hmm. A lot yeah. of them were solo guitar players like yeah. me who were just trying to amplify the sound as right. big as they could get it so it felt more like there was a band in front of those crowds as yeah. they toured around Mississippi and that's Louisiana right, and So uh, Acoustic Coffee House... Open D, mm-hmm. a song factory joint from Ellis Paul. Um, the second course uh, is an essentials format, which many True Fire students r- really dig that series. And your focus is on intros, also in open tunings, um, uh, but you do some in open G as well, right? Yeah, I'll be doing some in open G, open D, and even standard. Yeah. Uh, and I'll show people like, how to create an effective intro for their own music and and how it works in my music and you know you hear great songs like you know uh stairway to heaven or fire and rain by james taylor if you just close your eyes you can think like well how does that song begin and you don't think about the the lyric you think about oh there's that riff at right. the beginning that exactly. sweet home alabama don't don't ding 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 uh, ding exactly. ding ding and that's what you want you want sort of a a fingerprint moment at the head of the song that gets people intrigued immediately and pulled into the song. So when the vocal does drop, there's this moment that happens where the transition from the intro into the vocal creates tension and release. Give us a couple examples from the chorus. Um, Well, um, and I want to get you over to open G before we're done. Sure. Have you do a tune in that as well? Well, for example, this is a, uh, Maria's Beautiful Mess again. All I'm doing is laying down the groove, getting people ready. And then I walk the people through, um, these are the first chords. It's a romantic song, and that's that's it before the mm-hmm. vocal comes in. And I've just laid the bed, basically. Mm-hmm. And so people are just, if they're not mellowed out by that, then there's something wrong with them. <laughs> They've got too much stress in their life. You want to, you, you want immediately you want to take them to a place where you can lay that vocal in. And uh, so it lands like in a nice place. Mm-hmm. One more example in open D. Sure. Then we'll tune to open G. There it is. The black strapless dress fits just right. And that was a fall off from a four chord down to a two chord, which is just an interesting 
landing for the vocal. And then the, the voicing on the, uh, on the intro is from the chords. I just took the chords from the chorus and embellished them and, and added some little doodads mm -hmm. in there, hammer-ons. Black strapless dress fits is right. And to me, that sets up that drop to the two. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's hooky, but it's very different than where the chord lands. But mm -hmm. that focuses the landing of that vocal in a really nice way. Grabs you and takes you right into the song. Yeah, and it's a, just a great little, you know, snippet. Yeah. It's only a th maybe a 10, 12 second piece, but mm -hmm. it's fully realized. It has a circular kind mm -hmm. of thing where it brings you back mm -hmm. to the one and then you go to the two. So it's, it's, uh, it's nice. Yeah. Tune up to Open G. Sure. And I will shout out to folks that are chimed in from Michigan, South Carolina, Sweden, Pennsylvania, Transylvania, Transylvania? Dallas, Chile. Yeah. Um, I, I can't find the guy's name really quickly, but he is tuned in. I, I assume it's the same guy. He's always tuned in. Um, he's a great supporter um, from Transylvania. That's awesome. And obviously uh, passionate about guitar. So thank you, Transylvania. You know? <laughs> That's right. Um, you good in open G? I am. So tell him about the open G tuning. Well, the great thing about Open G, I, I bring it, it's Open G with a bass down to C, but again, uh, I am half a step down, just as a warning. So don't play along at home unless you want to go down half a step as well, <laughs> is what I'm saying. But the reference point is Open G and Open D, but this is Open D with a bass C, which is a Joni Mitchell tuning. Um, I learned this from David Wilcox, who's a great singer-songwriter, and he works a lot in open tunings. And Open D, I learned from Richie Havens, had a spectacular moment in my career where I played with him, and he and I just were swapping songs back and forth, and he played Here Comes the Sun, Knee to Knee with me, and mm. he was the king of Open D. And oh, he was. He had this enormous thumb that he just flopped over the neck and could bar the entire neck of the guitar with his thumb. Yeah. What a uh, seminal performance at Woodstock, you know, free. Which was an open D, if you want to go open back to D, that. Open D, and they told him to stretch because the next band wasn't ready or something. Yeah, he played Freedom wow. for 15 minutes or something. Huh? Or 45 minutes, I think it yeah, was, Yeah, it was actually. just yeah. nuts. <laughs> yeah. So, Open G. Um, mm -hmm. play, play any tune in Open G. Sure. With an intro. Again, you get the same kind of nuances that you do in open D. And what I love most about this, if you don't mind my stopping, is that the, the, the trail of those chords are almost exactly the same. So the slant, slant, stack, stack, slant, slant, stack exist in the same positions on the neck as an open D. So if you learn open D, your transition into, into open G will be very, very fluid and you won't have any problems. But I don't suggest you take on both at the same time. It's probably good to start with, no, uh, with and open it, D. In and fact, your way here. when you came in, the original plan for this was to combine the two. Yeah. And then you realize, you know what? There's start here. And you'll come back and do another edition on Open G. Yeah, we'll give right? you a few months to breathe in Open right. D, and then we'll throw. But open it'll G. be a breeze when you get to Open G, right? It will. It Is will. it Open G's Keith Richards, uh, one of his go-to yeah, tunes? Yeah, he would right? take off either the high E or the low E. I think it was. I can't I don't remember know, I which. I don't know myself. Maybe somebody out there knows and can chime in. Yeah. But all those great rock tunes. And yeah, and blues. everything is like again here. All of those harmony notes yeah. are right there. And, and th this time, you know, the, the low string, I bring it down to a C. So it's open G, bass C. It's a specific color of open G. And you get that really low. My capo's on four here, and you can hear how low that low E string is. It's just, it sounds like a stand-up bass player 
smoking a cigarette behind me and just poking <laughs> away, man, just playing. <laughs> do, uh, so do me a favor. Yes. Um, there are actually two True Fire cats from Transylvania. I two. hope I'm, wow. I'm pronouncing. I'd like you to dedicate this song to them. Uh, the first is, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, Fazek is one of them, and the other one is Yago B. All right. So, Transylvania, this tune is for you. I never saved a soul Never walked on water Except ice and snow There's a rumor in the choir I'm just the luckiest guy they know But I ain't no Jesus Never saved a soul I ain't no Buddha Oh, I struggle with wrong from right I ain't no Prince of Peace I've hit the floor in a good bar fight I'll ask forgiveness come Sunday Asking for trouble Saturday night But I ain't no Buddha I struggle with the wrong from right No, I can't walk Talk to God, I ain't divine. Only miracle I've seen is I can call you Got the words. How do you preach to the masses when you can't even talk to the girl? You get a little courage from holy wine, but then your speech gets slurred. I ain't no savior, I ain't got the words. No, I can't walk on water, can't part. Only miracle I've seen is you walking down the aisle to me. No, I can't talk to God. I ain't divine. Only miracle I've seen is I can call you mine. The only miracle that I've seen is I can call. You're mine, oh mine. I can call you mine, oh mine. Fabulous. And that's all again, that's just again that, this is the scale I was playing for the most part. And that's just slant, slant, stack, stack, slant, slant, stack. Yep. <laughs> Up and down the neck. And if you want to associate those with, you know, major chords or minor chords or one, four, five, the six chord, the two chord, you can do all that. Yeah, and again, or, this one was written in standard tuning. Yeah. And I had to bring it over here and, and, and embellish because all my embellished skills are really best suited to these tunings rather than standard. I can get more flavor and more color and more, more embellishments out of it. And certainly a lower bass line and on all that stuff. I mean, the, when you do these chords, 
Mm. I mean, just you can't get that out of standard right. tuning. Right. I, I I would encourage folks just try it. Just tune to Open D. Pick a voicing. We'll have when the courses launch. Uh, the first one will launch probably within the next sixty days. There'll be some you know free full length video lessons to check out. There'll be a chart. Just tune it and try one of the chords. I guarantee you'll be sold. Yeah. Okay? It just sounds so great. It's hard to communicate the feeling of the instrument next to you, you know, right. you know, on a live stream broadcast, you know, but, um, you know, you can see how much fun it can be. You can hear how awesome the music is, how inspirational for your own songwriting or just jamming with your buds. Um, You've also um, got to hear why Ellis Paul is one of my very favorite, maybe perhaps my most favorite singer-songwriter. And I am a Dylan is God freak from way back when. Mm -hmm. So Ellis, thank you so much for... Thank you. I know you still have some more stuff to shoot. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this thing. You've got fans all over the world, yeah. you know, every time zone, continent. And I know they want to know where the guitar came from. So, Oh, yeah. A couple of things. Um, before I get to the guitar, check out my channel, too. I have a, oh, yeah. a, a channel right here on True Fire. It's called the Song Factory Channel. And if you're interested in arranging songs on guitar, writing lyrics, writing melodies, uh, coming up with new songs, new ideas, and working within a community of other songwriters, which is even the most important aspect of it, is the fact that you can upload your songs and get feedback from other people and not be working you know, in a closet in Transylvania. You can come out and share your songs with people from all over the world and get feedback, and then some professional feedback from me if you want. And uh, So that's called the Song Factory Channel. It's right there on True Fire, and there's, there's levels of subscription there mm -hmm. For you and there's plenty of free stuff to check out so just head on over there and check that out this guitar is the ellis paul storytellers model you can see my name's on the the headstock it's made by a guy named george crackett it's k-r-a-k-a-t and i believe you have one of these i went to the your retreat he had yeah. a few of the instruments there to show off and I couldn't help myself. Yeah, there. <laughs> it's a remarkable instrument. I mean, it's just I love I and I'd never heard of him before, but man, I picked that guitar up and um it's just be beautiful sounding, beautiful to play, and they're beautiful looking too. I mean, look at that instrument. It's yeah, George incredible. George Crackett guitars, K R A K A T. I think it's it might be Crackett guitars or George Crackett guitars are, mm -hmm. I should be a better uh, uh, student of his. Uh, and, and what a great guy he is too. I mean, just yeah, super. He wanted to come to the, my songwriters retreat in Connecticut. That's the New England songwriters retreat too. I should probably mention that. And if you go online, check out the New England songwriters retreat. And he said, you know, I'm a luthier. Can I bring my instruments? And so he brought six and he sold four mm -hmm. and they're not inexpensive instruments. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he ended up making a killing, and he said, as a thank you, I'll, I'll make you your own model. Mm -hmm. So if you want this guitar, you can ask for the George, uh, George ask George Crackett for it. Well, actually, the, I the, want that guitar. <laughs> <laughs> the beautiful sunburst. I oh, mean, yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah, he, had, he let me pick out the specs on this and yeah. then the neck size, yeah. and uh, I decided I'd go with the sunburst. and. It's a, I've fallen in love with it, and for a brand new guitar, it's it's as you can tell, it's already playing beautifully and it sounds is. like it's open. And yeah, I feel very lucky. All right, man, play play us out. Pick any song. All right, I'll see if I can get through this. This is off my new album, and it's so new that I haven't really begun playing it in front of people. We're I'm live. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's okay. Um,
world could use a hero Cause the lunatics are running a shop I'll be your one man army I got a stone and a slingshot We could build a castle Or a cabin on this very spot With a view of the ocean And all the money you don't got That we don't got Where do you go when your faith gets weary To money, to God, or to chaos theory I'm asking you Are you living in the moment now? We could build a castle Or a cabin on this very spot With a view of the ocean And all the money we don't got The world could use a hero Cause the lunatics are running the shop I'll be your one man army I got a stone and a slingshot A slingshot yeah. I like the way you feel Beside me, colors the way I see beauty. We could build a castle or a cabin on this very spot with a view of the ocean and all the money we don't got. The world could use a hero. The lunatics are running the shop I'll be your one man army I got a stone and a slingshot A slingshot